Folks, welcome back and Happy New Year. I have your home prices and insights for Peel and Durham for week ending January 5th, 2022, the first market report of the new year. You know, in yesterday's market report, my Toronto report, I, I was talking about something that's been happening with the, on, on the selling part of the transaction that is really a disservice for sellers. And no sooner did I finish shooting that video that the same thing happened again. It, it's such a disservice, in my opinion, to sellers that it's worth me repeating what's happening. And, and this way you could, you know, maybe watch out for it. So at, at noon, a property was listed for sale. I quickly looked at it and decided uh, and read everything I needed to read and knowing that that property had offer date set up for seven days from now. Well, this is a good property for one of my clients. So within about a, an hour or two of it being listed, I went on to the, to the booking portal online to, to book a showing and I booked a showing for the next day for my, my buyer client. But I could see over the next few days it was busy with showings. There was a lot of the time slots filled up and these are 30 minute time slots, which is expected in this market. It's, it's very much uh, you know demand heavy, supply short. That's the market we're in. Well, again, noon the property was listed. Within an hour or two, I booked showings for the next day. Offer date set up for a week from now. Five o'clock that evening, I receive a message saying, no more showings, the property is sold firm. There's something in that situation that doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I'm not just talking about doesn't make any mathematical sense, which I'll explain in a second. I'm talking about from personal experience working with sellers. Now, keep in mind, this whole scenario I'm talking about is really from the point of view of me being a listing agent because I work with buyers also, but that's not where I'm coming from right now. The strategy of working for buyers is very different than the strategy of selling your home working with sellers. So at most, the property was listed at noon. Five o'clock is when I get the message. At the very most, with 30 hour time slots, 10 people might have seen that property. They received a bully offer and decided to accept the offer. I, I, I don't, just simple math, law of averages will tell you that if 30 or 40 over the next couple of days, if more people see that property, chances are you're going to really do better for the seller. Maximizing the sale, taking advantage of the current opportunities of having buyers compete for your home is really the whole point of having an offer date. That's the point, is to get buyers to compete, to take advantage of those opportunities. Well, selling it within a couple of hours to one person, there's no way that that can be as beneficial as showing it to 30 or 40 other people and getting multiple people to compete for that home. And I could tell you from personal experience of selling properties, the first bully offer that comes in, especially that quick, is rarely the offer in the end that, com that, that ends up winning the, or that ends up being accepted if you've managed that whole process properly. So I, I ask myself, is this in the best interest of the sellers or, or in the best interest of somebody else that it gets sold within a couple hours of going online? When you know, there's a huge opportunity just to wait another day or so or to maximize the amount of showings to get more people through the door and to have those people compete. So again, who you hire matters. And if you feel this information could help somebody you know, please share this videos. Let's get into the numbers. If you want to talk to me, anything related to real estate, it's really simple. In the description below, there's a link to my calendar. 
click on that, book a time that's convenient for you. This way I'll know ahead of time when we're going to talk and I'll make sure my schedule is organized so I'm able to talk to, to you about whatever's on your mind. You know, there's a lot of madness, mayhem, chaos going on with home prices and Peel and Durham is like top of the list. If you think you know what's going on this year in these markets, please let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know what, what's on your mind is what you think is going to happen this year in Peel and Durham. Let's get into the numbers. So for this report, I'm talking about we've got in blue here the Mississauga home prices. In orange, I've got the Brampton prices. And for, for Durham, I, I've got it broken down as Ajax, Pickering, and Whitby as one area representing Durham. These are the prices. Let's look at what's already happened. So I'm going to start off with Mississauga. This is for detached properties only. It's important to understand that there's no condos or towns or semis in these numbers. Just detached prices for the city of Mississauga only. And I've got starting from the year 2000 going to 2021. These numbers in here are sales and these numbers this way is average sold price. And when we look at 2021, the average sold price, the year average was $1,554,000 for Mississauga. That's a 23% increase from the previous previous year average sold price 23 percent year over year increase in average sold price that's that's phenomenal so when we look a little bit further well the first half of the year the average sold price was 1,534,000 the second half of the year was 1,587,000 and the second half of the year for us today is way more important than the first half of the year because this is how we're finishing the year. It's close to 1.6 million is the average sold price for Mississauga heading into 2022. So if you're wondering what's in store, this is the momentum we're going into the new year with. Looking at another chart here, again, we have sales on this side here going from the year 2000 to 2021. The green here, those are listings. And when we start looking at these things and we just compare the last two years, sales are up from 2021 to 2020. Sales are up in Mississauga. Again, just for detached properties are up just over 19% year over year. Listings are up 2.8%. So let's just call it 3%. Sales are up 19%. Listings are up only 3%. You would figure if sales go up 19%, you would kind of hope that listings also go up at a fairly close percentage. That's not the case. That's just compounding the, the, the supply demand issue. Sales went way up. Supply didn't really change from the previous year, only by 2.8%. So we're having a shortage. We're seeing it. This is, it's pretty clear. This is what we're going into the new year with. Let's get into the weekly numbers in Mississauga. Now, I, I should say, any kind of data where sales are this low, like for weekend in January 5th, there was only eight detached properties sold. I, I don't put too much stock or too much value into those numbers just because the, the pool of sales is really not, not big enough to get a, a, a true reflection of average sold prices. But I do the weekly numbers, so I'm putting them up, but I'm telling you not to, not to bank on these numbers. So we sold only eight detached properties. Two of those were at $2 million or more. An average sold price is $1,774,000, which is 30% than higher than what it was last year at this time. Of the eight, only eight were sold. 63% sold at list price or more listings. I'm really looking at listings. I want to see more listings come onto the market. We listed only 24. Last year at this time we listed 26. Not a big difference. So only 24 listings came on the market. Months of inventory is up at 2.4. Average days on market is 20. If you're in the market right now, if you're looking to sell or you're looking to buy, 
you know from being in the field experiencing real estate right now in the streets there's no way we're sitting at a, an actual 2.4 months of inventory it's going to feel like around 0 0.5 0 0.6 the market is extremely tight very few properties are available for sale we know we finished the year off with a ton of buyers that didn't buy they're coming into the new year a property comes up they all want to see it so this month of inventory because of the whole holiday season sales and 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 data not being reported or very few very little activity skews all these numbers here let's look at brampton i did the same thing i broke it down from the year 2000 to 2021 i'm not going to get into all that really simply though the year last year's yearly average sold price for the year average was 1,239,000. That's a 27.6% increase over the period previous year. It's a huge number. Well, the first half of the year average sold price was 1,189,000. The second half of the year, the average sold price was 1,312,000. That's a monstrous, a huge increase from first half of the year to second half of the year. And it's the sales and prices and that's the momentum, the second half of the year that we're going into this year with. And I don't know what you think, let me know below, but I don't think all those buyers that did not buy just decided, ah, I'm not going to buy anymore. Some maybe, but it's a whole lot more buyers that are kind of in the market right now. The whole supply demand issue is compounding. Let me show you another stat here for Brampton. Again, just detached properties. Sales went up 21% over the previous year. Listings went up only 13%. So we see that, that you know, if sales go up, you figure listings go up also. They did go up, but nowhere near as much as sales went up. These are the Brampton numbers. We sold 45 detached properties in Brampton. Average sold price has gone up to the highest that's ever been, 1,564. Remember though what I said about really looking at these average numbers when the sales are so low, it's, it's not a true reflection of a, a, a it's not, we don't, we're not selling a big enough pool of homes to get a, a, a true reflection of average price. Of the 45 that sold, seven were at $2 million or more, which puts us at 40% higher than last year's average sold price. 82% of the 45 sold at list price or more. We listed 57 properties. So we sold 45, 57 were listed. Months of inventory is sitting at 0 0.3. Brampton is one of the only areas that it, it, numbers kind of still reflect where they were last year or, or continued on this year. Let's look at the Durham area. Now for my other weekly stats for Durham, I'm looking at Ajax, Pickering and Whitby. But for these year over year reviews, it's all of Durham. So it includes Oshawa, it includes the whole Durham area, Scugog, all Durham, Uxbridge is in here. Again, all of Durham, but detached properties only. Average sold price, the year average was 1,029,000, which is 32.4% higher than the previous year. Crazy number. The first half of the year were under a million average sold price. The second half of the year were at a million and 79. There's a, a little over an $80,000 increase from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. And when we look at sales versus listings, sales went up. 21% year over year. Listings went up 13.1%. Again, not the same number, very much an imbalance between sales and listings. In all of Ajax, Pickering and Whitby, we sold only six detached properties. Average sold price is 1,318,000, which is 31% higher than last year's average sold price. Six were sold, all of them sold at list price or more. Only 18 listings, so this problem's not fixing itself. We still have a huge shortage. Months of inventory sitting at one. 
we know that that's not a true reflection. If you've been in a field in the, the Durham area or if you're a seller, it's just not a true reflection. Here's a summary of all the months of inventory. Brampton's the only one that really makes sense right now. As the weeks go on, we should see more listings. We should see these numbers normalizing to what a true reflection of the market is. That's the report for week ending January 5th. Again, if you have an idea of what you expect to see, good or bad, through the course of this year, please comment below. Really appreciate your comments. Have a great day.